All right, Doc Positive here, leader of the pack at the Paws Veterinary Clinic, and we're here with Pumpkin. Pumpkin's a 10-year-old uh, male cat. He's been the picture of health all his life. Uh, Mom rescued him 10 years ago, found him behind uh, a local restaurant, rescued him. But this morning when she woke up, he was not able to walk. He's been dragging his back legs around. You can see I can put his legs any place. And he is an indoor cat. So if you had an outdoor cat that uh, came in paralyzed, you would worry about whether they had been hit by a car and had a broken back. Unfortunately, uh, he most likely has this problem, which is feline cardiomyopathy. What happens is this kitty cat, uh, his heart has not been pumping as effectively. They're very prone to blood clots. And uh, the aorta runs off of the heart, comes down here, and at the back, uh, he's probably formed what's called a saddle embolism or a saddle thrombus, embolism, E-M-B-O-L-I-S-M, -S or thrombus, T-H-R-O-M-B-U-S. It's a blood clot that has lodged in the aorta where the blood supply to his back legs comes off. Uh, you can't really see it here. He can't move his legs at all. He's got no feeling in there. But when I feel his feet, his feet are ice cold. If you look at his pads here underneath, I don't know if you can really appreciate that, they're blue. They should be pink. They're blue because they're not getting any oxygen. That blood clot has lodged up here at the saddle. He's got no blood supply coming down to his legs. So this is unfortunately a heart problem for pumpkin that has led to blood clots the formation of a saddle thrombus, and paralysis of his back legs. It's not a real common problem, but it's not an unusual problem. When mom was standing in the waiting room, Tiffany uh, holding him, I could see because his legs were just hanging limp. You know, his, his front half is working fine, but the legs are just hanging limp. Uh, in order to attempt to treat this, uh, this kitty would need to be hospitalized. He's a beautiful cat. Mom loves him very much. She's had him, rescued him. Great kitty. He's just... Oftentimes these cats, though, initially when it happens, they cry a lot. They're very vocal. Now, he's been dragging himself around the house this morning until she was able to get here because he's got no use of his back legs. In order to attempt to treat this, he would need to be hospitalized on intravenous. He would require chest x-rays, EKGs, a cardiac echocardiogram. You know, here it talks about the diagnostic plan. You can see how long the list is. The therapeutic plan, uh, because with the heart, here's a normal heart over here with the normal uh, muscular wall. And with this, the, the heart muscle gets very, very thin. The heart gets very enlarged, doesn't pump as effectively. So treatment for this would involve hospitalization intravenous and having him on clot buster drugs, you know, heparin, other drugs to attempt to uh, break up the clot attempt to restore the blood flow to his back legs, attempt to treat the underlying heart disease, and to be perfectly honest, doc positive, um, talked honestly to the owner, Tiffany, that uh, these cats oftentimes don't do very well, particularly when they come in already paralyzed like this. Uh, it can cost thousands and thousands of dollars for the testing, the treatment, and ultimately, uh, the kitty cat may wind up no better. So mom is going to go home. Tiffany's going to, uh, you know, he's, he's, you can see he's playing here with mom. They're very attached. So she's going to take him home, talk to her husband, and decide whether to 
to say goodbye to Pumpkin because of the severity of the paralysis and the problem. And so she's got a little bit of time to discuss this uh, feline dilated cardiomyopathy and the saddle thrombus. Bye now.